you know, I mean, I'm already 32 years old, so I've been different places, different teams, different cities. Uh, so I think for a young guy, not only the extra work is important, but also to get opportunity and actually play. So uh, this would be the advice, find a place uh, where you're gonna play and where you can develop yourself. You know, for me to go to every game is like celebration, you know, so, so I try to dress up like it's a, it's a business, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm coming to, to, to work, you know, so I try to, I try to dress up properly. Tonight's game is at home, so the Monegasques are all in to secure their club's first ever passage to the Final Four. I believe in a routine, so whatever I did before, I do the same. As I remember, that day we did less because the game is going to require a lot of energy, so we have to save it. Since the beginning, I was feeling that they can make it, you know, that they can be in the Final Four. So I don't know, we just went to that game <laughs> as a big celebration because we just knew they will win. Good evening, everyone, and welcome here to a raucous Sal Gestan Medzen. It is the smallest arena on the EuroLeague circuit. As Moti Yunus gets the opening score, and Monaco come right out. James, as pure as you like, over Jarrell Martin. I'm not gonna lie, it was one of the best atmospheres we had uh, in that last two years that I'm here. Uh, you know, the fans were really uh, into it. Uh, they really supported us, they really cheered for us. It was definitely the best uh, supporting game that we had in two years. James somehow finds some space. Moti Yunus with the stick back. Strategy don't win in those games. You know, you have a basic plan, and then who wants it more? What a stand by Chima Moneke! Diallo, say magnifique! You talk about making the final four, yeah, it's nice, and this and that, but once you actually achieve it, it's an amazing feeling. Monaco, as everyone knows, is not the biggest country in the world, you know. So every small achievement like this, it's uh, it's a big thing for them. Like same like I would say basketball in Lithuania, you know, my country is not that big too. So any uh, achievement we get uh, in the basketball, it's a big thing for all of us. From the first moment I start playing basketball, I said I'm going to be a basketball player. I really actually wanted to, you know, I was ready to put a work in. Because, for example, like I would finish school at like 2 p.m. and then uh, I know like my practice is at 5, but I would go at 4 because there is a like uh, young team coach who allows me to practice with the younger players for, for an hour. I would go there, play with them, and then I have a practice like one, one and a half hour, and then after that practice I would stay another hour to be with the older players. You know, I, I stayed I stayed in Chicago with my agent to watch the draft. I didn't go there. I got drafted by Minnesota, and you know, I know I work out in different places, and then uh, Houston was one of them. They they really pushed me through the practice, and I didn't give up. And uh, I knew that you know from their side they really liked me, but I didn't know that you know during the draft they're gonna trade the pick. So, you know, when Minnesota picked me, I received a call from Houston right away, and they're like, yeah, you're coming to us. Press conference, and then, you know, we're gonna move from, from there. So, I remember that I was 10 years old back then. 
or 11, 11 actually, and my parents wouldn't allow me to watch it, but then they woke me up for that moment when they picked him. Of course, I didn't really realize what were these big NBA teams and what was going on. I just knew that NBA was a very big deal for him and how amazing that is and how people, how many people have this huge dream. I remember being very happy for him. I remember wanting to go and visit him. But the hardest part was not being able to see him at least a few times a year. When you're 18, 19 years old and you moved away from the family, you have to learn everything really fast. Every place is different, you know, coming from the Kaunas, going to Italy, you know, from Italy to Poland, from Poland to Houston, you know, then uh, Louisiana. Italy is in Europe, it's not as, not as culture shock. Poland, overall, we have very similar culture. Then going to Houston, Texas, there was a little bit, but, you know, not as crazy. But then you go to Asia, to China, where is the, the biggest culture shock I was, I was having in China. It was very hard to understand how, how I should adjust, what I should do, how I should react. For example, in China, it took me a good three months for guys around in the team, the local players, to understand that, you know, if you say something mean towards the Chinese player, like they take it personal right away. Because it's not common for them in their culture to, to tease around, you know, to joke around like that, like even harsher jokes, you know. It was definitely a culture shock, but in the end, it turned out to be one of the best experiences I ever had. After the first three months, I think, uh, I think my charger, uh, iPhone charger broke down and I, I went to, uh, I went to Apple store, you know, I opened the door and the little Chinese lady, she was like, like, hello, sir, how are you? I jumped back right away. I was like, you speak English? She's like, well, every Apple store have to have one person that speaks English. I was like, I'm coming here to hang out with you, like for three months, like, Wherever you go, whatever, you know, like the food places, whatever, no one really speaks English, you know? And then, then I, I go to Apple Store randomly three months later, I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna, well, you're gonna be my best friend because you're speaking English, you know? <laughs> the reason why Cassius is named Cassius is I think there's a picture right behind me too. Yeah. So Muhammad Ali, his uh, birth name was Cassius Clay. So as soon as the kids found out his name and they knew where the origin came from, they were like, well, he has to have a boxing birthday. And first birthdays are huge for us. You know, we kind of blow it out of proportion. I try to do it big. And I think another thing too is that this is Kyle's first birthday party at home. And I'm like, well, if you're gonna be here for it, you yourself have to experience a Gianna Lawrence event birthday party. So it was just beautiful to see people from all walks of life. My college coach was there. My friend from um, elementary school was there. Grandparents, friends, it was just really special. Nobody has ever said a bad thing about Kyle. Like, it's weird. He's perfect. He is not perfect. Kyle's not perfect. He has his quirks. I mean, Kyle has his quirks. I think in a weird way, it's a gift and a curse. I think Kyle's a people pleaser. I think he does everything in his power to make people happy. I'm the spicy one in the relationship. You know, I'm the one that if something goes wrong or if a meal comes out and it's not how it's, excuse me, can you take this back into the kitchen? He's like, no, I'll just eat it anyway. I'm like, but that's not what you ordered. I'll just eat it. Can you please take it back into the kitchen and bring what he ordered? That's how it is. I don't know. I don't mind it. Maybe that's why he chose me, because I like to speak up. I don't know. Yesterday's party was for my, for my son, Cassius. 
my house is this type of house. You know, it's a, it's a house for entertaining. You know, my backyard is always full of people. So it's always a great time, you know, after being away for 10 months, or it's a, a great opportunity for me to share this time with my family and friends. And it's something I look forward to and something I really enjoy. To start the fifth game of the playoffs against Fenerbahce, nobody in the locker room thought that we would lose that game, especially at home. They're an amazing team, um, but with the, the fans that we have, that crowd is, is, I wouldn't want to be on the, you know, opposite side of that. And we are ready to get underway here. It's game five, the decider in this playoff series between three-time champions Olympiacos and 2017 champions Fenerbahce. This one game is all that's between the winner and the final four. Here's McKissick. McKissick, the Shaq attack! Shaquille McKissick in the open floor just goes to the afterburners. Goes out Motley, gets the rub, and one. My biggest moment in the playoffs playing against Fenerbahce um, was probably the intensity. Um, I feel like the refs let us play like never before. You know, just sitting in film and watching the game back. You've seen a lot of questionable plays that, you know, the refs will call fouls for during the season, but they let slide in the playoffs, um, which plays to my advantage because, you know, I'm a big physical player. It was some of the best basketball that I was ever a part of throughout my career. McKissick rises in the corner. Pressure up the floor, Vizhenkov attacks and converts. McKissick with a thousand points in his Turkish Airlines early career. Our congratulations to him. And Olympiakos won game five at home. So they go back to the final four for the eighth time in club history. We're going there to take the trophy, okay? Yep. Yes. We expected to win. Um, so when we did, of course, we were happy, we were elated, and we were just starting to gear up and prepare for the Final Four. So we're living together with Donadas for only two years. So it's our second season together, living together. Actually, the first year of living with a professional basketball player, I wouldn't say it's tough, but um, it was a bit tough to realize that you have to manage your life and everything around the other person. Because at the end of the day, we are here because of him, you know? So I would say I needed to learn a lot living with him. You know, the discipline and everything. Yeah, everything has changed. During the Final Four, we're driving those streets. You know, I was telling everyone, I said, like, hey, this is where I was born. You know, this is where, uh, you know, the street that I was going every day to school. 
to drive by those streets to realize that, hey, we're playing Final Four and in my hometown where I actually grow up, where I walk all these streets, just like amazing feeling. I'm very thankful for the uh, city of Konas, you know, for my friends, for the people around me who, who helped me to become who I am in the end of the day. I know, I know a lot of people, if they're not going to be in the arena, they're going to be in the pubs, they're going to be everywhere else. Like, I talk already with a lot of people, so they will cheer for us, they support us. So, uh, you know, like I said, I hope for the best. You know, Lithuania is a basketball country, so... Uh, but yeah, the final four in Konas, I feel it was very special for him, because to come back to your hometown, to play such a huge uh, games in your hometown, was really very, very important to him. Um, when I arrived to the semifinal, um, I was very proud of Shaq for, you know, making it there. We did this one once last year, and this was the second time in his career, and I was just so happy for him, but also nervous. You're welcome. We've been here before, you know. This isn't anything new. We have to go out here, we have to take it one game at a time. Last year we lost in the semifinals on a buzzer. Um, so I think the first goal was just making it to that final game where anything can happen. I remember the first shot that I took. Like, now I'll get this out of me, all the emotions. Now let's play basketball. Oh, that's delightful low post play. Kissing, tough shot off the dribble, and he's connects. Tough bucket from downtown. Kill McKissick on the step back. <laughs> to Elia Kobo. Elia Kobo runs into a pincer movement and has his pocket picked. Three on one opportunity, and McKissick finishes on the break. A fantastic start to the second quarter. Kobo drives, kicks to the wing. Jordan Lloyd landing from downtown. Oh, swatted away by Dante Hall. We took control and they couldn't score nothing. Free throws, nothing. We, we had the control, complete control of the game for the first two quarters. Once again, how about that for help D from Jordan Lloyd? 
Uh, for me, Monaco really came out aggressive, and I feel like we matched their intensity. Um, they had some players really step it up in the first half, and when they stepped it up, we weren't able to climb to that level. No, Mike James, please. With two guys on a run, it still knocks down a three. We were shocked uh, by Monaco's first half play. Not in the fact like they got all the talent in the world. It was just us not rising to the occasion at that particular moment. Ball is loose. It's a Brown. bit of a scrum, and it's Jordan Lloyd who comes up with it. Elia Kobo stopping in transition and drills it from downtown. You know, at the beginning, um, we were down, but I knew that we were going to go up. So I was just um, waiting for that moment. Yeah, I think once we got into the locker room at halftime, Papa Nicolau just kind of talked to us, calmed everybody down, um, relieved everybody's nerves. And that's something that he's always good at. He's always been good at. Um, since I've been here, it's just kind of putting everything back into perspective. You know, we're the best team in Europe, so it's time to start playing like it. And coach came in, he was also very calm. It, it wasn't like, you know, tables being thrown or chairs being moved around. Um, it was just a simple talking to. Um, we didn't come this far to lose. Olympiacos to come out hard and look to make a statement in the opening exchanges of this second half. Some things that concern me and I talked with, uh, with my parents, you know, I talked with my friends that understand basketball. Um, this was not first time we collapsed like that. The big pressure shows the worst out of you, you know? Whatever we did in the first half, we didn't do complete in the second half. Oh, we fell again out of the low post, hooking up the cutting Isaiah Cannon. Three shot clock violations in this quarter alone. Isaiah Cannon with a suffocating defensive effort to completely shut off the offense that Elia Kobo was looking to create. What I remember about the third quarter, I honestly feel like that was probably the best basketball that I've ever witnessed in person. Walker finds a cutting and dunking. Sasha Vazenkov. What an offload and the foul. Corner three-pointer from Kostas Papanikolaou. He's buried. Kostas Papanikolaou, 11 points in the game. Um, it was kind of one of those things that's inexplainable. You know, you had Tom, Pop, Isaiah, Sash, Moose, everybody out there giving 100%. Surely go down in history as one of the greatest quarters of all time. Vazenkov for three. And Olympia Pereas are rolling here at the Jalgirio Arena. We felt like that moment was for us. I cried still from happiness at least, so I'm just happy about that. What a performance produced by Olympiacos Piraeus in the second half. They have completely shackled AS Monaco to just 21 second half points, including a remarkable run in the third quarter. I just wanted to run um, to the locker rooms and just give Shaq a hug and, you know, take pictures, post them, just, you know, show off to everybody that we won.
Tight. Congrats for the response in the second half. Um, we represented our team, our club, and our fans with the best way in, the, in these 20 minutes. This thir uh, third quarter that we dominated, uh, winning by 27-2. I mean, record in the, in the history of Euroleague. The defense that we played that gave us so much confidence in offense was something, you know, notable, really notable. So, uh, great job. Now, Let's calm down. No any celebration, please. We have in two days to finish up the, uh, the job that we started uh, early in October. Yeah. Okay, congratulations. Let's go, guys.